Carboxylic acid molecules have really high boiling points. This is because they have a lot of opportunity for hydrogen bonding. We're going to compare a carboxylic acid boiling point to an alcohol boiling point. Now, in general, with boiling points, there are two variables that contribute to the boiling point of a substance. One variable that contributes to the boiling point is the molecule's mass, the mo molecular mass or molecular weight. And what I've done here is picked an alcohol and a carboxylic acid that have the exact same molecular weight. So both of these are 60 gram per mole. Uh, and this means that the difference in the boiling points between these two molecules can be attributed only to the intermolecular forces that these molecules experience. Both of these molecules experience hydrogen bonding, but because carboxylic acids have this extra oxygen, they have an extra site where hydrogen bonding occurs, and this causes the carboxylic acid to have a much higher boiling point, 119 degrees Celsius for the carboxylic acid versus 98 degrees Celsius for the alcohol. The other thing that we're going to talk about here um, is carboxylic acids are weak acids. Of course, you probably guessed that they're acids because it's in their name. Um, these are weak acids. If you remember from general chemistry, this means that they exist in equilibrium with water. Um, so because carboxylic acids are, are, are acids, it doesn't matter weak or strong. One property of a carboxylic acid is that it is very easily deprotonated with any sort of strong base. So something like hydroxide or an alkoxide like OCH3 minus, anything like that um, will grab the proton, the acidic proton off of the carboxylic acid group. Because this is a strong base, this particular reaction does not exist in equilibrium. This is just a straight up forward reaction to produce a deprotonated carboxylate anion. And the other product of this reaction is water. If we put carboxylic acid molecules in water, because they are weak acids, they, um, their position of equilibrium lies pretty far to the left. So we don't see a significant amount of deprotonation taking place. In fact, I'm even gonna, I'm gonna change the way I show those arrows, showing very strong favoring for the position of equilibrium to be to the left. In this reaction, in this particular reaction, the oxygen of the water is used to do the deprotonation Again, making a carboxylate anion and H3O+. Um, but because, because carboxylic acids are weak acids, again, the position of equilibrium lies pretty far to the left. So the majority of the carboxylic acid remains in the protonated form and only a small amount of it actually gets deprotonated. The acidity of a carboxylic acid can be changed by um, the presence of electronegative atoms near the carboxylic acid group. So we're going to draw a few different carboxylic acids, and these carboxylic acids are going to have some halogens on them. Halogens, as you know, are very electronegative, and if we have electronegative atoms near the carboxylic acid group, they can help to stabilize the carboxylate anion that would be formed when the hydrogen is removed from the OH group. So we've got four carboxylic acids to compare with different um, presence of chlorine atoms, this one having no chlorine atoms at all. For all of these, we're actually, this is like an application of ARIO, uh, the trick that we use to help us remember the stability of a conjugate base or any of type of molecule. For all of these molecules, we want to imagine what the molecule would look like if it underwent deprotonation. So we want to think about a negative charge being on this oxygen right here. And how could those chlorine atoms help to stabilize that negative charge? Because chlorine atoms are electronegative, they're going to, through induction, the I of ARIO, they're going to help to withdraw the negative charge, like pull electron density towards them due to their own electronegativity. The closer the chlorines are to the negatively charged oxygen, the better they are at helping to withdraw or delocalize that negative charge. Uh, and the more there are, the better. And if there are none, then obviously that's not great. So if we're looking at these four different carboxylic acids right here, we could say that this carboxylic acid on the end is the least acidic, meaning that it is least willing or least likely to be deprotonated because there aren't any chlorine atoms or any sort of electronegative atoms to help to stabilize it. Um, this one on the other end, this is the most acidic, 
because this guy has two chlorine atoms and they are in very close proximity to the oxygen that would be negatively charged. So these two chlorine atoms are gonna help to delocalize that negative charge and stabilize it. Um, as far as comparing the other two, these each have one, and we're in this case, we're looking at the proximity of the chlorine to the oxygen that will hold the negative charge. This chlorine is very close to the oxygen. Or this one's a little bit further away. Um, so this one would be the second most acidic. I'm just going to write second most. And then this one would be the third most acidic, or maybe the second least acidic. And again, I'm just looking at how many halogens are there and how close are they to the oxygen.